Aladdin Lights, a lighting manufacturer based out of South Korea, primarily creates flexible LED fixtures for filmmakers. Their RGBWW Mosaic line initially caught my eye at last year's Cinegear. I'm excited to finally get my hands on the unique 600 watt Mosaic 4x4 foot RGBWW lighting fixture for a detailed review. Hey everyone, I'm Graham Ehlers Sheldon and welcome to CineD.com. The Mosaic line first drew my attention because of its RGBWW color and large format, available in 3x6 feet and 2x4 foot versions alongside the 4x4 foot version I tested for this review. I'm always looking for large soft sources that set up quickly and can fit in tricky spots like against a wall in a practical location or be placed near a ceiling without the need for complex and expensive rigging involving speed rails or menace arms. At first glance, the mosaic looks like it might be the ticket. But first, we need to zoom out a bit. You can break down most of the current LED lighting space into a few simple segments. Soft panel lights, hard lights, tube slash cube lights, thin or flexible fixtures. Regarding that thin or flexible category we are most interested in today, Lightgear and Intellitech immediately spring to mind as competitors to Aladdin in that segment, with their Spectrum Light Mat Auroras in the case of Lightgear and Lightcloth in the case of Intellitech. Lately, Aperture as Ameren and Nanlite have also dipped their toes into the flexible LED fixture space, but with generally smaller overall dimensions, a relative lack of built-in DMX control, and lower price points. Aladdin's Mosaic finds its niche in this space by giving us flexible, color-capable lamp heads and generally larger dimensions. Let's start first with the case. The Mosaic 4x4 foot ships in a long wheel hard case that will fit perfectly in your compact car, your grip truck, or SUV. In fact, I was surprised by how small everything breaks down. The lamp head only takes up about a third of the case. There's some minimal padding in the case, but nothing about the Mosaic seems particularly fragile. And that's one of the real draws of this light. There isn't a reliance on glass, and where plastic is used, I don't see it being a common impact point for drops or spills. Aladdin ships the Mosaic with a few items to get you started. Flexible lamp head, power supply, power supply holder, extension cable, basic head cable, frame, diffusion material with solid skirted sides, grid, hand controller, 16 bungee balls. This all feels like a very complete kit, meaning you may never need any other accessories beyond this list. At first glance, the frame in particular looks a little daunting. Still, it all assembles quickly with no need for me to consult any set of materials or manufacturer provided videos available online. Although, Aladdin does have those videos in case you need them. Everything connects quickly and is locked into place by small silver twisting knobs. In the standard configuration, you are essentially building a light box with skirted sides. As a DP, I have shot a few episodes of a series called Vice Informer with a single soft overhead source precisely like this one. Maybe this will become my go-to fixture for projects like that. Upon opening the box, take note. The frame only fits in the case one way. Once you've figured it out, putting everything back into place is easy. Rental house owners might want to take a picture of how everything packs away, laminate that photo, and leave it in the case for future renters. It isn't complicated once you know how, but if you don't, the hard case doors may not shut and that could get annoying at the end of a long production day. Connecting the flexible lamp head to the frame requires the use of 16 included bungee balls. If there's a potential weak point in this setup, it's here. The bungee balls take more weight than you would expect, and you have to use all 16 to evenly distribute the weight of the lamp head throughout the frame. 
connect to few, and the weight of the lamp head will pull a given bungee ball free from the frame if it's raised off the ground, which means you'll have to tie them together again using the friction point in the bungee ball itself. Although I didn't find any issues with the lamp head breaking free or drooping once everything is up and running, I wonder if there could be another solution than the bungee balls. Some advice. Connect all the bungee balls to the lamp head on the ground first before trying to raise everything off the ground. Of course, one of the advantages of the mosaic being a flexible mat design is that you could easily disregard the frame slash bungee ball system by connecting the lamp head directly to the ceiling with a wall spreader, for example. Alternatively, you could connect the lamp head to the overhead grid with sturdy zip ties or safety chains using the grommets that ring the LED mat. Doing so would mean the diffusion accessory wouldn't be compatible though. Still, plenty of other standalone frames on the market provide useful diffusion in a pinch. Lately, I've been working with soundstage grids that have weight limits. The Mosaic 4x4 foot is low weight enough that I wouldn't be concerned mounting one or several over talent with the proper safety chains in place. Let's talk about that diffusion for a moment. It's essentially full grid only, and the sides utilize solid black material to prevent light leaks. The diffusion slides into place, and the frame's dimensions keeps everything taut with the help of cloth bands on the corners. Unfortunately, if you want to use another strength of slip-on diffusion in these dimensions, you'll have to wait. The Aladdin team mentioned they are in active conversations with DOP Choice, a third-party maker of quality lighting accessories. I hope that conversation will lead to other types of diffusion with the same slip-on design. TBD there for now. You will want to use the included silver baby pin accessory to connect the frame to a stand of your choice. Once everything is put together, the overall weight is impressively low. I could easily carry the whole lamp head plus frame around in a way I can't with airy sky panels, for example. Still, I found I prefer to use a rolling combo stand to move the fixture around set just a bit faster, given the larger dimensions. I wish Aladdin had gone with a Kino-style back mount here. I'm just so used to that system. And a lollipop or wing mount style would have been nice and would have led to a bit more flexibility when panning or tilting the fixture. Without a Kino style mount, use a grip knuckle and tilt up and down as needed. Another included pin adapter is useful for connecting the power supply to your stand. Still, you won't find the clicking in mechanism here that has become popular with brands like Aperture or Nanlux. I highly suggest purchasing a Mayfer clamp and leaving it in your Aladdin hard case to keep the power supply off the ground and affixed to the stand. A little mechanism to click the controller into place on the power supply would have been nice as opposed to having to hook it over a stand. These are minor quibbles with the included accessories. Still, every quality of life improvement means less time between setups while on location. So, Let's hop back to the competitors for a moment and compare costs. You can learn a lot about where a brand thinks its product will compete based on the chosen price point. All three of the currently available Mosaic flat fixtures, tube versions are shipping soon, sit in a premium place in terms of cost, but don't quite land at the top of the market when compared to the newly announced rigid Light Gear Spectrum 8, with its roughly $9,000 price point, or the more flexible $14,000 5 by 10 foot Aurorus, also from Lightgear. Here's the current pricing for the Mosaic line as of summer 2023. One of the key differences out of the gate between the Spectrum 8 slash Aurorus and Aladdin's Mosaic line is the use of pixels. Lightgear's 5x10 foot Aurorus features 12 large format programmable pixels, giving the Aurorus fixture the ability to do more movement-based effects. Aladdin's Mosaic fixture doesn't have integrated programmable pixels, but for me this isn't a big deal as I don't use pixels that often anyway. Your answer might be different if you often work on music videos, uh, stage shows, flashy product, or fashion shoots. Remember that although the Spectrum series from Lightgear has color, it isn't bendable like the Aladdin Mosaic line or Lightgear's own Aurorus line. 
The newer Spectrum updates also make their lamp heads a little thicker than previous generations of the Lightyear Spectrum. Food for thought. As I alluded to earlier, IntelliTech makes some flexible lighting fixtures. Still, their new Lightclaw 3.0 line currently tops out at 400 watts, and it likely wouldn't be able to compete with the 600 watt Mosaic 4x4 foot in terms of pure output. Now, let's turn to control. The Mosaic is controllable in several ways. The first option is with a hand controller. The second is with a rear lamp head mini controller. This choice provides minimal control options though. Lastly, Mosaic is controllable over Bluetooth using the all-in app built-in Lumen Radio or a 5-pin DMX input, which provides additional options with your favorite DMX accessory. In practice, the hand controller is very easy and intuitive to use, and I also found the app to be one of the better mobile applications from a lighting company. It all just works. Plus, the 4x4 foot mosaic connects quickly to my iOS device with a multitude of options for dialing in my favorite colors or Kelvin temperatures. As I mentioned earlier, the rear lamp head mini controller doesn't provide a ton of options for changing settings. Still, it's a fast solution if you want to audition a different color or Kelvin temperature. You don't get any indication about exactly which Kelvin temp or color you're at in a given moment. But it is a fast way to eyeball things on the run by just watching the colors change on your subject. In general, I'm never gonna complain when it comes to more options for controlling a lighting fixture. More is always better. The all-in app also presents you with various effects such as fireworks, flicker, welding, fire, police car, and more. You do have a few preset digital filters like leaf green, urban sodium, sunset red, high sodium, and others. But they aren't locked to well-known industry numbers from common gel brands like Roscoe or Lee. At this point, I bet you're wondering about output and Kelvin handling in CCT mode. If you're a numbers person, stick around for this next part. I went ahead and tested the output using Lux and Kelvin handling of the Aladdin Mosaic 4x4 foot at a distance of three feet with my Sekonic C700U spectrometer. Here are my results, starting with a target of 5600K with no accessories or modifiers attached. I recorded an excellent CRI of 95.6 throughout testing, by the way. A result of 6,574K is a bit further than I would like from the 5600K target and a so-so overall result when it comes to Kelvin accuracy. Later in testing, I addressed that on my particular fixture by finding the optimal settings for hitting 5600K daylight. Now for a target of 3200K. A result of 2,993K is closer to the target of 3200K when compared to the results at the daylight end of the Kelvin range. Output remains about the same. Finally, I wanted to determine the optimal controller settings for getting the closest to true 5600K as possible. So I kept metering with my Sekonic Spectrum Master C700U until I set the Mosaic's hand controller to 5030K and got the below results. As you can see, it is possible to get to a very accurate Kelvin temperature if you use a spectrometer and don't necessarily follow the controller menu settings one to one. One of the nice things about the Mosaic 4x4 foot is that the output remains relatively consistent as we move through the CCT range. Alrighty, now for some closing thoughts. Aladdin's Mosaic line is an impressive large format soft light source that is flexible enough to mount in various places or bend to fit an existing location. It sports a premium price tag and may be a rental only item for some, but there are few competitors when comparing watt to watt, flexibility and dimensions. The bungee ball design takes some getting used to. The Kelvin accuracy in CCT mode isn't perfect and I wish the frame mounting solution were a bit more versatile. However, the overall setup time is low and transport is easy in the wheeled hard case. If we're talking quality of light, this is a color fixture that will remain a go-to for me as a gorgeous soft light in a variety of situations. Plus, 
my gaffers will appreciate the multitude of DMX options available over the five pin port or built in. I know I'll be using the all in app on smaller shoots where Bluetooth works as a perfectly acceptable option in a pinch. There's much to love here about the Mosaic series and I look forward to seeing how Aladdin continues to help expand the line with additional fixtures and new first and third party accessories. There you have it. That's my review of the Aladdin Mosaic RGB WW flexible lighting fixture. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Rev Studio in San Diego for their help with this review. Go to RevStudioSD.com for more info on how to book their beautiful studio space.